Welcome back to the Robin Word, and uh, I am not Pastor Rick. Uh, usually he, he does Monday, Wednesday, and Friday Broadmans. Uh, however, he is on vacation. He is on a cruise, actually, uh, which we are so happy that he's taking that time uh, to do that. Um, so, with that being said, I am here to do our Friday Broadman, and I am very, very excited to do so. Um, and and what we're going to look at today, we are going to go to Psalm chapter 139. Psalm 139. And in this chapter, there is a verse that um, is used a lot for the pro-life side, um, for this argument that is um, babies are incredibly valuable in the womb, out of the womb, uh, and life begins at conception. Uh, and that is something that is very prevalent in our day today. Um, and Psalm 139 uh, is one of those uh, passages that a lot of people turn to. So I want to break it down. I want to see how valuable is this passage uh, for uh, those of us who believe that life is uh, incredibly valuable. And not only that, but it, is, uh, it begins at conception. So uh, turn with me to Psalm 139. So Psalm 139 and it is uh, starts in verse 1. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. So first things first, when we look at the verb know, there is a very specific thing that the psalmist here wants us to know about the word know. And it is that the word know here, uh, the verb know, is not just to know about something, but to know that person or that thing that is being talked about. So for us, a lot of the times when we talk about knowing something, we're knowing, we're talking about information. We're talking about, okay, what are, what are the facts? What are the things that I should know uh, about this person or about this thing? Uh, whereas here, it is a very personal uh, version of no. I want to know this person to their uttermost. I want to know this person in, in and out. Um, that is the verb that's being used here in Psalm 139, just the very first few verses in verses 1 through 6. And the psalmist basically takes this time to say, look, Lord, we want you to know us intimately. We want you to know us uh, through and through. We want you to know us on our good days and bad. We want you to know us uh, and to guide us uh, through life. Um, and that's kind of what we start with. And then we go from there to a couple questions in verse 7. Where shall I go from your spirit? And that is the Holy Spirit. Or where shall I flee from your presence? And this is a psalm. So it's written most likely, um, it is written uh, from somebody that is is dealing with a crisis of some sort whether it is uh, emotional or physical, uh, he's dealing with a crisis that is at hand. And so this psalm is a, is a song um, that is written to remind the psalmist and us who is in control and who we can turn to. Uh, and then there's some conditional clauses here as well. Verse 8, If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall come over me, and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. And for us, especially uh, um, 
the Bradman words that I've been doing on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, we just went through the life of Jonah not too long ago, and this fits perfectly with that, right? Not only is there the essence of of the fact that we cannot run away from the Lord, uh, there's that there for sure, but there's also the fact that uh, the Lord is ever present, uh, no matter the circumstances. And we see that there. And so we're just painting this picture of, okay, Lord, I want to know you. I want you to know me as well in a relation. Uh, a relational aspect. And because of that, uh, I know I can do so because you are everywhere. You are there for me at all times. And because of that, I know that I can have a relationship with you. And what a beautiful picture that is, right? Um, And then in verse 13, Here's where we get into the parts uh, and really the the one section in the psalm where a lot of people will take this for the pro-life argument. So let's break this down. Verse 13, for you formed my inward parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. Now, here's the cool part about the psalm, and here's the cool thing about the Bible, specifically. (laughs) Uh, Here's the cool thing about the the Bible. Uh, Now, the whole of Psalm 139, is it about being pro-life? No, uh, it's actually the whole Psalm 139 is about looking for and searching for a relationship with God. That's what this whole Psalm is about. However, what's cool about the Bible is you can take things that are in um that are, in, that are talking about one thing, and yet you can learn things uh, outside of that one topic that's being written on. So, for instance, Psalm 139 is, is written with the idea that we want to know the Lord in a relational aspect because he wants to know us that way. And one of the cool parts that we can do about that is because uh, we know that God wants us to wants to know us in a relational aspect because he has already started that process uh, before we're even born out of the womb. He started that process while we were still in the womb and while even at conception uh, and obviously before time as well, right? But what's cool about this is we can learn that the Lord values human life in the womb as much as he values life out of the womb because he wants a relational um he wants a relational uh relationship <laughs> he he wants a relationship with you and I and he wants to start that as early as possible uh and he starts that while we are still in the womb uh which is really really cool to see now when it comes to this section yes there is a lot of stuff here that help with um the pro life movement uh and again with with uh with pro life movement christians believers we should not have our walk with christ identified by us being pro life but we should have our b- christian life identified by us being believers and because of that that then will influence us being pro-life because we have a very high view of life and because the Lord has a very high view of life. So with that being said, um, let's look at these. So first, verse 13, you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. Uh, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Um, Verse 15 is a very beautiful way to put uh, 
to describe conception. Uh, it is something that happens without the mother really, um, really feeling it. Uh, yes, there are part right. Uh, pregnancy definitely, it's definitely. Um, it definitely works at that point eventually. But when the conception happens, it's almost like it's a mystery. Uh, when did that? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it happens uh, like it's being like a baby is being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Uh, that is referencing the womb. And and yet, be, even with that, my frame was not hidden from you. Uh, so therefore, even in that moment, when conception begins, even then the Lord knows. And in order to know something, in order to know something, and again, not know about, not know informationally, but really to know something is to want a relationship with, with that. Uh, and the thing is, you can't. The Lord wants that, but with a living being. And so how then can he know us if we are not alive at the moment of conception? That's kind of the argument from verses 13 through 16 in Psalm 139. So let's wrap this up. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake, and I am still with you. O oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God! O men of blood, depart from me! They speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. I count them my enemies." Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. And this is just the perfect way to sum up how we long for a relational, um, a, a relational, just a relational relationship. This is how we see that there we want a relationship with the Lord and how the Lord wants a relationship with us. Um, and we see that with the desires of our hearts shifting from things that are temporary and things that are material to the things of God in verse 17 uh, and verse 18. And not only that, but then when we do suffer when we do suffer and when we do come upon hard times, we know that the Lord is right there for us in verses 19, uh, in, uh, in verse 19. And then in verses 23 and 24, what beautiful couple of verses those are. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And one way that we can do that and one way that we can, uh, we can go about that is, is standing upon his promises and upon his values. Uh, and one of those is is the value of human life, as we see in Psalm 139. But more importantly, uh, this psalm is talking about searching for God in a relationship and wanting to have him as your Lord and Savior. And that is a, why Psalm 139 is a beautiful psalm. Uh, and it's also why we want to uh, you go to Psalm 139 to show how precious life is. So I will see you uh, next week. I'll be filling in for Rick on Monday, and then I'll be uh, uh, doing my normal Brown Word on Tuesday. Uh, but then Pastor Rick will be back on Wednesday morning. All right, so I will see you then. Thanks.